Does anyone else feel like the trauma that we went through in grade school of trying not to be made fun of and trying to be somebody who was sort of like invulnerable to being made fun of and then that pursuit sort of like kept going into adulthood and may have been like coloring some of our motivations for financial success or for which partner we're attracted to and we may have suppressed a lot of our true desires along the way in order to keep ourselves safe from judging eyes. But have we considered <laughs> that when we look at the music artists or any sort of artist that we um, admire the most, they're completely unique, completely weird, super strange, and completely expressing themselves without thought about what the norm is or how it should look. So the word peer means both somebody who's in the same group, same age level, is also a student, just somebody who's one of our peers, and to look at, to observe closely, intensely. So we look at other people's people <laughs> as examples for how we should act and how we should be. And sometimes that gives us this permission to be ourselves and it gives us that freedom and they're an example and an inspiration and other times we look at them and we find ourselves lacking or we find ourselves at fault somehow and it can be the very same person it's just the lens through which we're looking we're peering <laughs> through in that moment that determines that and a lot of us in like middle school or around the age of 10 or something like that have put into place all sorts of protections to keep ourselves invulnerable from being made fun of. And those very same things can be the things that sort of cut us off from our own intuition, from our own inspiration. And then what you see happening is you see a whole lot of um, leaders spring up who have an entirely different way to look at diet or to look at thinking or a different framework of mind. And then there's, um, there's also like some dogma and rules and um, understandings that separate the people who follow this from the people who do not. And YouTube has been such a beautiful platform for teaching and for sharing and for making this content available and free for everyone. And at the same time, it's also been a platform for people to come up like this and people for <laughs> peers for us to peer at and judge and judge their understanding. Um, or to follow. And so you in feeling as the ultimate authority, whether this person is inspiration, whether this person is giving you the permission to let go of those tensions you've held, of those criticizing thoughts you've had that haven't been letting you do what you really want to do and relax <laughs> when you are meant to relax. Sometimes I feel like being a YouTuber is sort of like being on a treadmill and it's like you're supposed to put out good content, you're supposed to grow, you're supposed to put out content weekly and what, uh, <laughs> when I focus on what I want and when I realize I'm feeling like there's some sort of pressure there, what I want is to teach people to pursue their own endeavors and to do them with love and everything they've got and to do it fully, but also to know when it's time to take a break and not to make it the end all be all. You can't heal other people unless you take the time and make the priority for your own healing. And what you find is that there really isn't a conflict there. 
you have to put on your own oxygen mask first. And this isn't saying that you um, can't start helping people or you can't, uh, people who have problems can't heal other people, but it means that you are completely worthy of doing that. One of the things that I had a blockage with about meditation is I felt like it was something that I really needed to do um, to align with the understandings that I had discovered and to align feeling with that. Um, but the, the need to do <laughs> was a huge, it did not resonate whatsoever. And when I realized that I get to take a rest, I get to take a break, I get to clear my mind and just put down this trying of um, trying to hold things together and hold things in my life conceptually that <laughs> I could just be and I could just relax into that. <laughs> it's a little scary because you don't know um, you don't know how weird you're going to end up being or how weird you're going to end up acting because there's still that, oh, the 10 year old can't be stupid. And when I go home and go behind the couch and pick my nose and read my comic books, and that's the only um, place that I feel me anymore because at school I have to wear the cool sneakers and say the cool words and pretend not to be a 10 year old, <laughs> all of that can just be put down and we can authentically be who we are. And when we realize what we've most been stricken by and most admired in others, in our peers, is when they were completely authentically expressing themselves. They weren't worried about what other people thought. And even if initially we were sort of disgusted by that, we realized that that was a <laughs> projection of jealousy, that they can be that way, but we can't because we have learned these patterns and we have to stick to this to protect ourselves from what other people are thinking of us. We can put that weight down. <laughs> And it's crazy to me to see this dragged over into like YouTube channels, into spiritual YouTube channels. And um, there being like a split between Neo Advaita and people being critical of Neo Advaita and people not getting Neo Advaita. Or critical of whatever else as if enlightenment was this great attainment that some people have and some people do not. There aren't people and there isn't even time to progress to get it. It is fundamentally <laughs> it's fundamentally now not separated from anything else. And a lot of the issues come up when we are unwilling to express jealousy. When somebody has something that we want, up here. You're looking. It is a beautiful gift. You have defined what you want. And then there are beliefs and there are things that are saying that he has it and I don't. But when we see it and we appreciate it, the double meaning of the word appreciate, it becomes more. And it's not for any separate self. Jealousy is not bad. It's just that there aren't other people to be jealous of. Everything is, is becoming. When you see something, you have an emotional reaction towards it. Sit with it. It's a beautiful opportunity for discovering a belief that you want to let go, discovering some direction that you want to go in. And know 
that you awareness are aware of the sensation and the sights. You are not a body that moves in the world to go and get or procure anything. You are not a self that moves in time to become anything. You are constantly, as awareness, attracting everything to you. And so when we feel as if we already have, and when we see something and we see and we know that it is us and we appreciate the gift it is, beautiful things come about. 